guys, welcome back. So in today's video, I'm going to basically inventory all the items that I got at the bins over the last week. I went to the bins actually four times in the last week, two last Sunday, once during the week, and then today's Saturday, I just got back from the bins a little bit ago. So I do need to get all this inventoried and cut off any tags, anything like that, so I can wash all of these items and get them photographed and listed and sold. I'm gonna record my screen so you can actually see what I title these things and how I input everything to stay organized. I think it's very helpful to have some type of a tracking system, inventory sheet, spreadsheet, something like that, just to keep organized. And I, at some point soon, do wanna make a video showing how to make an inventory spreadsheet just because I have had quite a few people ask for that and I know that would be helpful for a lot of you. So that's something I do want to do and have been meaning to do and will do. So I'll show you guys what I found at the bins over the last week and kind of my whole process of making sure I take note of everything, get the cost of goods down and everything like that to stay super organized and you know, make it as seamless as possible. So, okay, so my first trip to the bins last Sunday, I actually tried a new bins and um, it's a location I haven't been to before. And I only got two things. I was there for like almost two hours and I only got two things and they were pretty good things, but I obviously wasn't super successful at that, trip, at that location on that day. So, um, okay, so the first thing I got was this Patagonia button front, lightweight. I think this is actually a kind of fisherman's shirt, the kind that blocks from the sun and everything like that is sort of the feeling of this. It's, it feels very like waterproof, water resistant, lightweight, outdoor. Um, so those are some keywords I would use when describing this item. So on my uh, inventory spreadsheet, this is from 121. And that's when I input everything. Um, Patagonia, button front, outdoor, long sleeve shirt, blue, men's XL. The other thing I got at that same trip to the bins was this icebreaker pullover merino wool hoodie. And this one, I had never found icebreaker before, so I was pretty excited to find this brand. And it's an outdoor brand, but I was pretty excited to find it. Let me know if you guys have found this um, brand before, Icebreaker. All right, and then my cost of goods is just two items from this trip. So my total was $3.63. And there were two items, so it's $1.82 each of those all right moving on so this is they're gonna go into this bag to wash everything and I just got to make sure there's no tags or anything on it I don't believe either of those had any tags so those are good to go all right and then this I will hold on to I hold on to all of my receipts for tax purposes if I ever get audited which Hopefully it never happens and the chances are small, but it's good to hold on to those things. All right, and then moving on. So this was the same day. I didn't have very good luck at that first bin. So then later in the day, I went to the other bins that I normally go to. And I, again, didn't have great luck, probably because it was a Sunday and there were a lot of people there, but I did get three items on this trip. So the first one from this trip, I actually had never, I don't know if I've heard of this brand before, but I know I've never picked it up or maybe even found it, but the brand is called Coolibar, Coolibar, and it says quality sun protection. And I just really, when I took a look at it, felt like this seemed like it was a pretty high quality brand, good condition item. And I did check on eBay to see what items like this sell for from this brand. And there were some recent solds, very recent solds around 40, $50 and a lot of them had the um, terminology like UPF 50 or basically you know, hinting at the fact that they're sun protectant items. So I did wanna give this one a try. 
school bar pullover, lightweight hoodie. This is a pink size medium. Do you guys have any experience selling cool bar, coolie bar? Let me know. All right, and then I found this pair of Hudson jeans. And if they were a pair of Hudson skinny jeans, I don't even think I would have looked at them. But since this was a pair of bootcut Hudson jeans, I felt like this was actually a very good style, a good pickup, and they're low rise, which is definitely in right now. So low rise bootcut, they do have the pretty classic button pockets in the back. So I thought this was a great style. These were an item that was at Goodwill and then I'm guessing nobody bought them at Goodwill at that price. They had them priced at $14.99. So then when they got sent to the bins, I got to find them and spend a good amount less than that. So I do like to inventory my items before I wash everything just because for this reason, if there are these Goodwill tags on them, I definitely don't want those to go into the washer. So it's a good reason just to kind of go through everything before. All right, oh, I should mark these. So this is a pair of Hudson, what were these called? Pop Signature Boot Cut. Low rise jeans. I would call these kind of a medium to darker wash. I'm gonna say dark wash, size 28. And this last one from the same trip to the bins was this rag and bone wool hat. And this I was pretty excited to find just because again, it wasn't the most successful day at the bins. So I was pretty excited to find this rag and bone um, wool hat. Felt like it was a pretty good style and I'm Curious to see how this does. I actually don't know if I've ever sold a flat brim hat or have much experience selling rag and bone accessories other than clothing. So we will see how that one does. All right, and then on that trip, I spent $5.86 and there were three items. So $1.95 per item. And this I won't obviously be able to wash, but I'm just going to steam this just to kind of clean it up and I will give it a good lint roll because it does have a little bit of lint and hair and stuff on it. And then this next trip to the bins was on a weeknight. I went after work, I think it was on maybe Wednesday night and I got a good amount of stuff on that trip. So I was pretty excited. I don't think I found anything super amazing, but I definitely, did get some good stuff so I was excited to have a little more success on that trip to the bins than I had on Sunday basically. Okay, so this one, oh, I'm pretty excited about this one. This is a Tommy Hilfiger pullover crew neck sweatshirt. Does need a little bit of cleanup, obviously some stain treating. It's gonna get washed, but I will definitely spray and wash or like with the stain remover to get the stains out. But this is a size large. He's like blue. I don't know if you guys remember for any of you millennials or older, but these are the tags that I definitely remembered. Um, you know, these like blue where they're not quite paper, but they're not the, you know, super coated or waterless kind of tags like on the Levi's jeans. So I felt like this was a kind of older tag when I saw it. And then on the tag underneath that, it does say the month and year. So this was from August 2001, so true Y2K piece. It's not retro, it's not a remake, which I did feel like was reason enough for me to grab it. Probably sell this for right around like $30 or so. So this day was the 24th. And um, see size large. These are all kind of a gonna be a surprise because I can't quite remember what I even found on this day. Okay, so this is a We the Free pullover crew neck, pretty thin, lightweight, a little bit of a burnout style where you can see through it. 
definitely casual, good, basic. I would probably use the word normcore when I list this one. And We The Free is a sub-brand of Free People, size medium. Not a, not a major one. I'm probably gonna end up getting around $20 for this, but I can imagine it'll be a semi-quick flip just because it's a good, very solid basic, good brand. This is a pair of Pilcro cargo pants, which is a brand sold at um, Anthropology, and it used to be called Pilcro and the Letterpress. So if you see a tag that says Pilcro and the Letterpress, just know it's an older style. Pilcro is the newest iteration of that brand. And I thought it was a good style, a little bit cargo, um, kind of a more boot cut leg, good color, size 28. So these, I would guess, would sell right around 25, 30. All right, this one is actually a local Portland brand. The brand is Portland Gear, and they do a lot of different, you know, pretty local Portland type um, apparel and accessories. This isn't one of those brands that I would expect to get much from, but I just wanna see how it does, if it sells quickly, if it sells for, you know, decent amount, or if it's pretty much like a $10, $15 flip. It does have some rose details on the arm. I really like this just because I'm a native Portland human, but I don't know how it's gonna do. And mostly I just picked it up to test it out and potentially just keep it, honestly, because I do like the, ooh, what's the style of, of uh, apparel that brand has. Portland gear, pullover crew neck. This is a pair of seven for all mankind jeans in a gray wash, raw frayed hem, a little bit of a wider leg. Can't remember if it's a straight leg or a boot cut. Boot cut. Yeah, boot cut is a very popular style right now. So whenever I'm a little hesitant whether or not I'm gonna grab it, if it is a boot cut style, it the chances of me picking it up go way up. So that was kind of the case for this one. And I like for Seven For All Mankind jeans that they actually have the style jeans on the tag. Not all, I mean, a lot of them do, like Madewell does, but some definitely don't. So it's nice when they have it right there. It makes it a lot easier to make decisions and to list it. All right, oh, this is a style pickup. It is a pair of Nike. Kind of jogger style cinched hem cargo pants very soft they feel barely worn ever potentially never washed like they are very new condition and nike is not a brand i will pick up very often to flip just because it's one of those brands that retails for a lot but doesn't resell for a lot unless it's like shoes or you know a more substantial item but typically nike isn't a brand i'm you know majorly on the lookout for but i felt like the style of these is really really great very lightweight perfect for spring very you know aesthetic and um a good style so i figured this would be a good flip even if it's not anything major probably expect around 20 bucks for these color do you think these are? They kind of look like an olive green, but then they kind of look like gray. I feel like I'm thinking there's a little bit of a green, a green hint, so I'm just going to say olive green. And they are a size large. I potentially could use Gorp Core just because these are a little bit more of an outdoorsy kind of a style. Oh, okay. This I actually, funny enough, this is a pair of Madewell pajama bottoms and the main reason I even grabbed these aside from the fact that I have had good luck selling Madewell pajamas in the past but I did a little bit of style research to just quickly get a refresher on current trends upcoming trends to help make decisions when I'm outsourcing but 
a few articles that I looked at said bows were very on trend this coming spring, summer. Um, so I felt like when I saw these pajama pants by Madewell that had little bows on them, I felt like it was a sign to pick them up just because I knew just from earlier that day when I did a little research that bows are gonna be in. And even though they're not actually bows on this, it's just the, the print, I thought it was still actually a really cute um, way to wear that kind of a style. Or if it's something that's on trend, I do think that more people typically are on the lookout. So I will definitely add, you know, bows in the title, like bow pattern. This is a rust, rust color. Just nice large. So this is a Project Social Tea Urban Outfitters Pullover Crew Neck Tigers on it. I picked this up because you know Urban Outfitters pretty good uh, brand to resell a lot of times depending on the style. But I felt like this was a good basic, good style. I like the tigers. I feel like this will be a pretty decent flip. Cream, cream or light gray. So that'll probably be around a $20, $25 flip. This brand is actually a new to me, new to me brand, and the brand is called Koi. I do believe these are a brand or a line of scrubs, but they're more of a cargo style, a little more trendy style of scrubs pants. So I did want to pick these up, give them a try. They're in very good condition. Definitely more, I guess, stylish than a typical pair of scrubs pants, so I could see why someone would want these. Argo scrub. And these ones are a size medium. But this was one of those cases where the style looked pretty good, plus this kind of detailing on the inside made it a little bit more unique, so I kind of looked into it. And this tag seemed like a little bit more of a nice tag than, um, you know, a fast fashion brand or something a lot cheaper made plus it has the style name the 701 Lindsay so a few of those kind of quick indicators were the reasons that I ended up looking more into it and deciding to pick it up give it a try see how it flips next up is this pair of Madewell jeans they are the perfect vintage jean in a size 26 petite this is a style I really like selling and have good luck with and they are not distressed which I was pretty excited about because I really seem to find mostly distressed jeans. So it is nice to find some non-distressed jeans. And sometimes the petite lines take a little longer to sell, but I have actually typically had good luck selling um, items under the petite category or line um, sizing. So it definitely doesn't deter me from picking them up, but it is something to keep in mind when you find an item that's petite is Sometimes it might take a little bit longer to sell, but hopefully that won't be the case here. And these have a little bit of a tapered leg, the perfect vintage jean. So that's something I will use to describe it. I'll say zip fly. You know, sometimes you can use the um, description five pocket style that's the typical jean one two three and then two in the back five pockets whiskering if it had whiskering um, frayed hem or raw hem if that were the case but just all these little things to help describe an item definitely helps to sell it better market it all right and then this is a pair of free people movement loungewear jogger style sweatpants they do have some hand pockets an elastic waist drawstring to tighten all things i will use in my listing to describe so free people movement is free people's i guess athletic 
brand line and it has done very well for me especially the more loungewear type pieces um, those do better for me than the leggings or anything like that so when i found this pair of comfortable like at home loungewear sweatpants i did decide to pick them up These ones are a size large. All right, a couple more from this day and then we are moving on to the stuff I got today. So this next one is an airy pullover crew neck. Actually, I guess it's more of a scoop neck sweatshirt. On the back, it's got a graphic, it says beach days. And I picked this one up just because it's a really nice kind of terry cloth pullover, um, pretty comfy. I think as far as airy goes, I do like to pick up the more loungewear comfortable items. I think those seem to do pretty well. I usually can flip like an airy crew neck sweatshirt or some type of pullover sweatshirt for right around 20 to 25. And you know, these actually retail sometimes around like 60 bucks. So it's a little bit pricey of a brand. I mean, it's like American Eagle. Buying new American Eagle jeans are like 70 bucks but you can pretty easily flip them for 20, 25. So these are kind of underrated brands to flip in my opinion, just cause it doesn't seem anything, it's nothing majorly substantial or exciting of a brand, but they're pretty consistent sellers and a good more, you know, bread and butter type item. It's definitely an oversized fix. It's a size extra small, but it looks like, you know, more of a size medium or so all right and then lastly from this day i found this pair of we the free jeans and they are either a straight leg or a boot cut let's see if they say i don't think they say but it looks like one of those and they're a size 25 so a little bit of a smaller size they do have some light distressing in the knees and then a raw hem down at the bottom we the Free, I've had good luck actually selling their denim in the past. Overalls have done very well for me and their jeans. So I don't find jeans by this brand very often. And I actually wouldn't be surprised if these were donated with that We the Free top potentially, because I actually don't feel like I find We the Free super often. Let's see. I'm gonna say these are a straight leg. They look more of a straight leg to me, but I will probably investigate a little further when I go to list them. So then on this day at the bins, I spent $29.85. And let's see, there are 13 items here. So that came out to $2.30 per item. It's $2.79 a pound at this bins location, but if you go over 25 pounds, then it goes down to $1.59 a pound, which obviously is quite a bit cheaper. So I've yet to reach that 25 pound mark. And I think I just need to spend a good chunk of a day at the bins and actually reach that because clearly that would bring the cost of good down so much. And I just seem to always end up getting like at most 10, 12 pounds. So I do really need to go in with the intention of staying long enough to get enough stuff to bring that price down um, rather than just going for a couple hours here or there. So I probably will try to do that at some point soon and just, you know, figure out how I can get to 25 pounds in one trip, but it's kind of easier said than done for me. Okay, so this is from today, which is the 27th. All right, I guess I'll show you, uh, I'm gonna save this best one for last. <laughs> okay, so first up is this Pendleton wool, knee length or so, um, skirt, 100% wool, vintage. Um, this is a size 12, but I'm going to need to kind of figure out the current sizing. I think this is an older piece because 
To me, this looks more like maybe a size four or six. And so I just gotta, I gotta get the measurements on this and then make sure I'm getting the size right because vintage sizing is a little different than contemporary sizing. Hopefully it'll be a pretty quick flip. Pendleton is a brand that I always wanna find more of a classic print by that brand and the patterns, those unique colorful um, patterns, but I always seem to find just their wool items, which is okay. And I think they do sell, see right here, Pendleton Houndstooth wool trousers. Those are another pair I found recently, but yeah, I'm hoping that at some point I do find something a little more true to the Pendleton brand as far as like looking at it and knowing immediately it's Pendleton. So hopefully I'll find something like that soon. It's a nice style though. It kind of flares out at the bottom and is more fitted at the waist with a zipper and button in the back. So I'm, I'm thinking this should be a good flip. Probably sell around hopefully 35, 40 bucks. Next up is another pair of Madewell jeans. And it's a style I've never found before. So I think this is actually a, quite a good style to find. It's the dad jean. And it's a size 27. Some light distressing, a little hole in the knee, and then some light manufactured distressing up here. Back slip pockets. Good style. Medium wash. washed and then photographed. This one is a brand that's new to me and I looked it up at the bins. I did some quick comp check and the brand is Peter Millar, M-I-L-L-A-R. And this is a 100% merino wool quarter zip ribbed sweater, size men's medium, great condition, barely worn, feels like new and comps were looking right around 40 50 60 dollars sold and there were quite a few sold pretty recently some were a little bit lower like in the 30 dollar range but most of them were higher like that let me know if you have heard of this brand peter millar but this i'm pretty curious to see how this one does i'm guessing it's going to be an ebay sale just a hunch it feels like it will be but yeah see how this one goes There are a few items in this bunch that I'm going to have to steam instead of wash, which does clean them up and everything, but some of those merino wool items I will not be able to wash. Okay, this next one is a pair of Good American Jeans. Great brand to flip and one of the few brands I would pick up skinny jeans from, but the style is Good Legs, which I have sold before. And this is another item that was originally at just a regular Goodwill and did not sell there. So then it ended up going to the bins and it was priced at $24.99. So I can see why no one had grabbed it, especially if it's people who are at the thrift store to flip. That's a pretty high priced, pretty high price point for a pair of jeans in a lot of cases. So I can definitely see why those were passed on, but I was happy to find them in the bins and hopefully this will be a nice and quick flip. All right, and then lastly, my friend who I went to the bins with today actually found this. This is this Marc Jacobs tote bag, shoulder bag, and I felt like these the strap, these um, buckles right here are very Y2K, 90s Y2K. I have to do a little more research into it, but it does seem to be an older style that was kept in very good condition. It's not cracked leather. There's no major scratches or anything. So I was so thrilled when my friend gave me this and I do need to clean up the inside a little bit, but 
pretty excited to find this. And from my quick comp check, it did look like this would be a good flip. I am a big fan of this one and it should be a good flip. And it did retail, I, I saw it, it sold on the real real not too long ago for like 125. And it did say it retailed around 950. So I don't know that it was quite that much for my Mark Jacobs purse. Could have been, but you need, in any case, I would expect to get at least 100 or so for it. It's in such beautiful condition. So let's see how this one does. And today, so this actually did add a little bit of weight to my total at the bin. So I think I'm gonna weigh this and see what this exactly weighed and then kind of work backwards from there just because I don't want all of the items to be increased by just this one item, if that makes sense. Okay, so this weighed two pounds and four ounces. Okay, so 279 a pound times two point Five sixty-nine for that bag. So then, nineteen eighty-one minus that five sixty-nine equals fourteen twelve. So then, fourteen twelve divided by the number of other items, which is four, comes out to three dollars and fifty-three cents. So that actually was a pretty high cost of good per item for the bins. I feel like most of my items don't come out to be that much, but maybe those jeans were a little bit heavier. The merino wool sweater and wool skirt. So I guess they were just kind of heavier materials. Denim is always a little bit heavier, of course. All right, that's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know how you liked this type of video and if it was helpful. Hopefully the screen recording part was helpful. And let me know if you would like a spreadsheet video because I think it would be really helpful just to quickly go through how to make a spreadsheet to organize everything. I'm definitely not a master at Excel by any means. I would say I am intermediate at best, but I can at least create an organized, you know, spreadsheet of how to input stuff so that you can keep things organized and everything like that. So let me know if you would be interested in a spreadsheet video. And if you are, then I will definitely get on that and make that happen. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a very good rest of your day and I will see you in my next video. Bye.